Joe in real life. So my my current plan is going excellent. Like I keep waiting for the other shoe because it's um it's just going so smooth that I feel like I don't deserve it somehow and that it's too simple a plan and I don't understand why it's working. <laughs> that sounds dumb. And probably to my viewers, to you guys, it doesn't see it probably seems much the same way. Now, to be totally fair, there's a lot of work that I don't film. Um, because I'm not a good film editor, and I'm lazy, and it's just kind of hard to do. I, I do want to get better at that and improve these things, but pff, my motivation's really low. <laughs> it's, just, it's just hard. Uh, why start a YouTube channel if you don't want to learn to be a film editor? I don't know, but I did, so here we are. Um, this is my plan. Let me break it down for you. It's a simple push-pull legs, you know? Um, I rest in between every workout, and by rest, I mean I squat every day. I do, I still do something, but it's unambitious, you know? So on a push day, I will do a heavy triple, double, or single, kind of building up over the course of weeks, swapping that up, reserving the right to change my mind, working in a couple of uh, assistance exercises, usually antagonistic, and then I break it down to an adjacent movement. In the case of push, it would be ring push-ups. And I do a single set or two to absolute failure. And that's it. Then it's over. I might, like yesterday, I did like uh, shoulder halos to finish it off. Uh, I might add something, you know. But uh, basically, I'm doing a principal movement, an ab movement, an assistant movement, or antagonist movement, and then an AMRAP. The whole thing takes 30 minutes. It might take 40. And it's pretty vigorous. Oh, and I do the winning warm-up first. That takes about 10 minutes. I was like, I'm saying it takes 30 minutes. I'm like, why does that even take 30 minutes? It's more like 20. The winning warm-up takes 10, you know? And that's a basic structure of 25 reps of three upper body movements. Um, three or four rounds, you know? And I don't do that for specific numbers, the winning warm-up. I do that for a feel. Like, I want a pump. I want that first tier of fatigue. I don't want the second. That's it. And if you don't know what your tiers of fatigue are, like, great, Joe, how do I duplicate that? Um, but I don't, understand, you know, I don't understand your tiers of fatigue thing. Well, you just got to feel it out, you know? Honestly, it will take you about a week. Like, I can't describe it to you. I think Matthew Wenning prescribes four sets of 25 for three to four exercises. I often find I've had enough. I'm at that point in three, three sets. Though occasionally, I do do four. And um, I think it's important to be non-persnickety about that. I think like you, lit it's got to be on the day, you know? Uh, like w you don't decide that in advance. You put the weight in your hands and you start doing it and then you decide, you know? It is a warm-up, meaning, like, it matters if you go too hard, you know? And it, and it will cost your performance, for sure. You know, it's too many reps. <laughs> like, like, if the weight's too heavy, then the reps are going to be way too many. And then you've, you've tipped into I'm working out range, not I'm warming up range. Um... On leg day, on push-pull legs, on leg day, I do it a little different because I'm squatting every day, right? So, and a, a true AMRAP doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, and my actual max work is structured wildly different because I have a different squat goal, right? 
I'm trying to squat my body weight for 20 reps. Um, so going for heavy triples, doubles, singles. Well, I mean, that's all fine and good. Uh, but it's not really what I'm after, you know? So I'm building that in a different way. And if I'm honest, although it probably doesn't seem this way to you, the way I'm doing it right now is probably more work than I can recover from. Now, I'm still going to keep doing it because I'm, I'm liking it. It feels good. It's fun. It's engaging for me. But probably I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. Um, what else? You know? So what? Live and learn. We'll figure it out. Uh, today would be a rest day. And um, I'm going to exploit it. I'm thinking front squats. And I'm thinking I'm going to do a classic build-up, 10-pound jumps from the bar. I'll stop at my minimum, 155, or I'll push a little past today, because honestly, I feel good today, you know? And that's what's great about the new system. I, I just went off explaining it to you, but I didn't say why first. I should have done that. What's great is, with the exception of the AMRAPs, I leave the gym wanting more, and I've been crushed with doms the last two weeks, but this week, I feel good today. I could do yesterday's push workout today, um, and it would cost me, but I could do it, and, I, and I'd hit the same numbers. Like, I feel really good, and... Everything's moving in the right direction. I'm still eating like an asshole, but I'm going to rain that in starting tomorrow. And like, I got high hopes for this, man. I like, I feel a little bit like an idiot. Like I've been overcomplicating this shit <laughs> and, and it's nice. It's nice to, it's nice to have gotten somewhere. So anyway, that's my lengthy rant for today. Stay tuned. We're going to do front squats. We're going to start at the bar and we're just going to go. We're going to go to the top, or rather the minimum, <laughs> um, and then make choices after that. Stay tuned. Really good, easy, and fun workout today. This is at three times speed. The entire thing took me about 30 minutes. Um, yeah, just as I described, 10-pound jumps from the bar to the top. I've been very, very strict about not stepping over my daily minimums, which would be 155 for the front squat, 185 for the back squat. Uh, today, it just moved so well, man. I just felt good and strong. My mechanics were a little janky if I want to be nitpicky, but the weight moved. And so I took 165 for a ride and I had everything I could do not to go for a new PR in the front squat today, but discipline, right? I want to be strict. I want to set myself up for success. I want to do this like a proper block. And at the end, really cultivate something good, you know? Uh, I absolutely had 185. 165 moved better than 155, moved better than 145 and 135. But restraint, you know, patience. Um, I have, I'm good with patience. I, I do well with things that require patience, uh, except weightlifting. <laughs> and I don't know what that is or why, but it's something about just being in your garage. I like to call it my war room, being down in the warm room and feeling your body, feeling that heat and electricity in your blood when things are going well. Yeah, something takes over and I know I'm not alone in this feeling but it's very hard not to go for a new high score when that happens you know just feeling your body and it, it's crazy that I'm feeling as good as I am because I've been eating like an absolute asshole just snacking hard eating chips lots of sandwiches went to the movies yesterday we saw spider-verse the new one which I really want to talk about because um, it was awesome. I loved it. 
but also like I'll save that for maybe tomorrow's video um, you know I, I think I've mentioned I have a little elbow tendonitis in the right arm and I'm no stranger to elbow tendonitis um, but it's a it's weird it's kind of atypical to the point where I wonder if it's tendonitis at all it's kind of like it's near the elbow but it's up the forearm more on the right side and the left side's a little tender too I think and this is only my opinion here but I think it's a combination of bench pressing and front squats that really inflames elbow tendonitis in weightlifters um, of course every heavy movement exasperates it and riding a bike which is a straight arm static position for long periods that's not doing it any favors either but also tendonitis well I'm gonna let you in on a little pro tip about tendonitis you can just work through it you know now not severe tendonitis <laughs> like that's an injury you know but mild to moderate tendonitis that fits in the category of a tweak for me which is like tweaks I I don't feel like this is esoteric knowledge at this point but you work around a tweak you don't not work um, and tendonitis feels a little different and it lasts a little longer or it, it lasts a lot longer but it's you just work around it man you don't stop because of tendonitis you know you adapt um, it, that attitude that attitude makes it sound like I'm I'm all for putting your head down and pushing through pain I'm not really I, d I don't think that's a good idea and I think if you're injured like my buddy Matthew may or may not be Matthew I'm sorry I haven't checked up on you in the last couple days I've been doing life been doing the life stuff the domestic duties guy stuff um, but I hope you're well and I hope you're healing and um, yeah man I like if you're injured you've got to you've got to take care of that shit like because it will set you back you know tendonitis a couple weeks a couple weeks of discomfort but an actual tear rupture of some kind that's months man that might be a year you know I think that part of why I have consistent and per persistent hip pain is because back in my yoga days I was injured and I prescribed yoga to the injury to make it better which almost assuredly made it worse um, it's part of the game you know that's part of writing the user manual to your body everybody's stupid sometimes <laughs> um, you can beat yourself up over it if you want but I, it, it, you know, the results are going to be pretty shit <laughs> I promise you know anyway I'm watching these front squats as I'm talking and I'm really liking them man they look good like these I know that my squats looking better and better that this last year more so than strength gains more so than the numbers going up my technique has refined enormously and I feel really good about that when I first started posting videos of my squat the comments I would get were like man you have got to work on your form <laughs> you are gonna get hurt blah 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 and to be totally fair to my critics a lot of them made good points and it was a suboptimal squat form for sure it still is but I don't believe it's dangerously suboptimal and I had some confidence that if I just squatted every day a lot of those problems would correct themselves and if I thought about it too hard and got myself into the weeds with it that that would set me back now th this is a gamble of course uh, but it was a gamble I was willing to make and you know Ivan it's one of the great lessons of, uh, of Ivan's channel which my channel is a pale imitation uh, outright plagiarism of his and you know I, over the last two years I've seen his, his squat was already great 
and it is just it is so tight right now it is so technically mm. can i use the word delicious is that weird it's a beautiful squat um and so with him being the canary in the cave i felt pretty confident that if i just was disciplined consistent and devoted that this would correct itself and maybe i got lucky a little bit you know a little hard work mixed with a little luck and a lot of devotion and things just kind of started lining up started lining up and making sense and i'm really happy today i just i feel like things are moving in the right direction anyway that's it for today this is joe in real life it's another long video um i've been rambling a lot lately i don't know yeah, that was the 155, and at triple speed, you can't really check form, but I felt good about it.